So we need to prevent pollution if we're going to prevent the related problems. To do that, we need to use state-of-the-art and constantly improving pollution control in industry. We need to have far more selective pesticides in the marketplace and to avoid them when we can. We need to convert to renewable energy if we're going to reduce nitrogen oxides and CO2 and methane pollution. We need the laws and policies and economic incentives to get this done and to control nutrient loops, to close nutrient loops. We can close nutrient loops with smarter agricultural landscapes where the animals are higher up in the watershed and the production facilities are surrounded by croplands that need the nutrients. We need to compost the waste of animals and people to control the pathogens and capture the methane and generate electricity with it. We need precision agriculture where we test soils and fertilize only where necessary and do it at appropriate times of the year, never on frozen ground, for example, when it will run off. We need cover crops over the fields throughout the year. We need wider buffer strips. We need native plants, diverse species, so that they can be there during all parts of the growing season and provide habitat for pollinators as well. We need to monitor for nutrients, monitor for hypoxia, watch out for botulism, pick up the pigments of harmful algal bloom producers with satellites. We need to identify cyanobacteria and other toxigenic algae and find the toxins when they're there because we have to warn people about their own health, protect them from the toxic algal blooms and also their animals and we need to be able to try to manage for wildlife as well if we can keep them away from the toxic source. There are many different career opportunities in pathology, diagnostic pathology, toxicologic pathology, in different parts of toxicology, in government, in academia, in the public sector, in industry as well. There, there's work to be done in public health in relation to environmental toxicology as well. And certainly in regard to environmental planning and management and One Health. And we need some people who may want to combine their training in veterinary medicine with other aspects as well, with other forms of expertise, perhaps to acquire a law degree or to become familiar with policy development or to jump into the foray in politics to where wiser management gets done, to where animals and people are all protected at the same time. So we focused on who has fun, one toxicology, industrial pollution, cancer, and a bit more, petroleum and related contaminants, insecticides, and cyanobacterial toxins. We've wrapped up with some ideas about how you might take this on as a future career, or at least be aware of it as a veterinary practitioner. Your efforts are going to be important. You're going to save lives. The question is, how many do you want to save, and how do you want to get it done? Hopefully you'll prosper. Do it a lot of good. Have a wonderful life. Charles Darwin's life certainly took on extraordinary meaning, and he had that life because he got out and he looked at things. He was observant. He paid attention to relationships. And he wrote things like the existence of groups would have been far simpler, in effect, if one group had been exclusively fitted to the land and another to the water, one to eat flesh, another to eat vegetable material, and so on. But the case is so widely different, for it is notorious how commonly members of even the same subgroup have different habitats. What he saw was divergence in evolution and convergence in evolution. He saw species competing for resources and how that brought about a life-sustaining dynamic ecosystem on which we rely. So comparative biology, comparative biomedicine, one toxicology, one health, they all form the basis of careers for now and for the long-term future. We have a lot to get done. The planet is in trouble. It needs to be rehabilitated. There are careers, and you can take them if you choose to do so.